Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we are back to working on the Jimmy DeResta bandsaw restoration, and what we've got today is the top wheel. Now, in a previous episode, or a couple episodes, we worked on the bottom wheel getting this uh, shaft out of here, and we learned a few little tricks along the way. And uh, hopefully we're going to be able to take that to our advantage and make this one a little bit easier than the last one. So first off, uh, before we have done anything else, I have come over here and I've looked at this nut on this holding the end of this on here really, really well. And uh, if you remember from the previous episodes, on the bottom wheel, it had left hand threads. And when I thought I was loosening that nut, I was actually tightening the nut and uh, we made our job a lot more trouble than it should have been because I wasn't paying attention. Now, one would assume that this one would be left hand threads as well. However, I've come in here and looked very closely at it and you can see the very top thread coming out of this and this one is actually regular right hand threads or regular normal threads. They're not backwards threads. So, you know, righty tighty lefty loosey. Lefty loosey is going to work on this one whereas we had to do a lefty righty loosey on the last one. So uh, I think this one here is going to come off the normal way. Why is it that way? It has to do with the, the torque of the bottom wheel because it's the, the, dr the driving wheel. Uh, you want it to actually be tightening that nut. Whenever you first turn that machine on, you get a big surge of power and you could in theory unscrew that nut on the bottom. The top wheel, because it's not directly driven by the belts or whatever, it actually is going to have the opposite hand threads on it, um, which seems a little counterintuitive, but hey, that's just the way it is. And uh, that's the way this one is regardless, at least that's the way it looks like right now. So game plan, I'm gonna come over here. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna clamp this thing down to the saw horses, just make everything a little bit more rigid. Uh, we're gonna take some heat, put on that nut and get out my big crescent wrench uh, because I don't have a wrench big enough to fit this nut and probably put a cheater bar on there and see if we can get it to come off without tightening everything up in the process. Let's get at it. So just got a little block I'm putting up on top of these and we're coming in with these big heavy duty F clamps that I've got that uh, are awesome for this kind of work right here. And we'll just uh, tighten that down real good. And we're gonna do that in four places um, all around this. kind of show you this uh, hub here. You can kind of see there's a thread that comes around right here and right about there it's even with the bottom and then you can see it actually coming right up on top here. So I'm pretty sure that to unscrew this we're going to have to go in this direction which is uh, the normal direction for uh, loosening a nut. This is how I finally determined on the last one that it was uh, left-hand threads uh, because I, I did the exact same thing. That was after I had tightened it up real good. Let's get some heat on that. Um, see if that'll help break it loose. Right, let's fire up our torch. Got a rosebud here. And we're gonna concentrate the heat on the nut and uh, that should help break it loose, hopefully. Hopefully we don't have a repeat of the last wheel here. Let's see if that's enough to get it to break loose. Put our crescent wrench on here. Adjustable wrench is probably, look at there. No problem at all. I mean, <laughs> it was barely even on there once we heated it up. That is the way it's supposed to come off. All right. So this is a little uh, hydraulic press that I made. I'm gonna put a jack in here to jack on this thing and I'm just suspending it up with my gantry crane at the moment. 
And uh, what we got is some pieces that are gonna go up underneath the bottom, kind of capture all this together. Put a piece on this side. Put a nut on there to hold it together. This will come up over here. There we go. Putting that on this side. Now we'll use our gantry crane to kind of position it where we want it. What I want is these uh, arms up underneath the bottom to Band up underneath the hub. Try to get that centered up as good as we can. All right, just put a little bit of tension on it. So let me grab my jack, put it in there. I'm gonna put a piece of plate right there on top of this. I just don't want all of that pressure hitting the bottom of this casting right in one place. I'm afraid I might bust the, the casting in the jack. That's just to kind of spread the weight out a little bit. We'll put our jack in here. Turn this up as far as it'll go. that up. All right. So the idea behind this little portable hydraulic press that I built is, is pretty simple. It works just like a big hydraulic press, floor mounted hydraulic press, but instead we're not, we don't have a floor mount here. We're just kind of hanging it onto the part. We've got support up underneath the hub that we're pressing against and we got the frame connected to that so that it's basically pushing in between there and we're pushing down on the center hub. Um, I've got a hydraulic press out at the museum, but the maximum width on this 36 inches. These wheels are 48 inches. They wouldn't, it wouldn't fit on that press. Um, so I came up with this idea. We tried it on the last one, ended up weren't able to press it out. I'm hoping that we're gonna press this one out. And what I'm gonna do is put a little pressure on this before I put any heat on it, just to see what happens. And keep my fingers crossed. And it's pushing back now. So I'm gonna take the torch, we'll heat that hub up and uh, see if we can't get it to come on apart. Putting heat into this um, hub and uh, with any luck, it will cause it to expand just ever so slightly that Oh, that shaft on the inside, there it goes. That shaft on the inside is uh, tapered and makes for a really tough fit, but that heat was just what we needed. And uh, there we go. Oh. And there is our shaft. We got the tapered hub in there and I might be able to salvage that shaft. Uh, we'll see. If not, we can always make a new one. 
And that, my friends, is how it's supposed to be done, not like we did the last one. Ah, that actually worked extremely well. And I really think that had I not screwed up on the first one and tightened that left hand nut and just created a monster of a tapered uh, wedged in part that we just weren't able to press apart, I think that this little uh, portable hydraulic press would have worked on it just like it did this, but this is textbook. Now as to this little portable uh, hydraulic press, I'm sure I'm not the first person that's ever dreamed up something like this uh, where you kind of just hang it in there in place. But uh, I will say that I've, I don't think I've ever seen one of these before. And this was something that came to me while I was uh, thinking about this problem, trying to go to bed one night. I said, well, why can't I just uh, build a little press and just mount it in there? And uh, that's exactly what I did. And this thing worked perfect for that job. And uh, this, we're going to keep that. I'll be willing to bet you that this thing shows up again somewhere down the line. Uh, on a on a press job where I just it's too big to get on a, on a hydraulic press, this thing worked like a charm. Pretty pretty proud of myself. Like I said, I'm sure I'm not the first person to come up with it, but uh, it worked great. There you go. Let's take a look at this uh, shaft. This is the taper right here, and I'm just going to get a quick measurement. So let's just say one eight forty five. And we're at 1,932. So roughly 100 thousandths taper per whatever distance that is. I imagine it, this, this one here, I noticed when we took it apart that it was about a quarter of an inch from being at the top, or the other one was more or less kind of flush with the top or right below it. So I imagine this is the same taper that we have in the other hub, which is good because I'm going to have to recreate that taper. I can actually use this shaft. It's got centers on both sides. I can put it on the lathe and I can adjust my taper attachment to match this taper uh, using a, a dial indicator to get a perfect match. I was really kind of concerned about how I was going to figure out what that taper was and getting it set up because I wasn't going to be able to put the hub into the lathe that's just too big. Uh, but having this, I can definitely work off of that. The other thing I'll note here is right here, again, to one inch, 930 thousandths. Right behind that, we're about 100 thousandths. It's worn into the shaft. That's just uh, from the wear on the Babbitt bearings. You get out back out here, and we're about, what is that, 885. Uh, this is the center, about 895, and then you get on the other side, and very little wear down there. So it makes sense. This is the side that's got all the pressure on it. It's worn down to the inside. Not a big deal. Um, you know, there's a couple of things I can do. You know, I may, I may look at spray welding this and build that back up. Uh, I may just turn this side down to a little bit whatever a nominal size so that it cleans up all the way across. That's probably what I'm going to do because this diameter is not that important. Uh, we're going to pour the Babbitt to whatever size it is. Uh, it just needs to be a true size. So we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Uh, I can tell down here is a little bit of wear. So there probably is a little bit of wear on that end as well, but we'll, we'll uh, like I said, probably what I'm going to do is we'll just turn this all the same diameter, not mess with the hub up here. It'll be, you know, 100 thousandths smaller in diameter, 50 thousandths smaller in diameter, but not going to matter. But I think we can salvage this shaft. Uh, the other one I was pretty sure we were going to have to replace regardless. Um, but then after we had to bore it all out and cut it all up, there's no doubt we had to replace it. So, but I think we can salvage that one. Well, there we go. That was easy. Uh, <laughs> compared to the other one, that was really easy. And I'm real happy about it. I'll take easy over hard any day of the week and uh, glad to have one more step done here on this project. Um, and 
yeah, we're going to have to work on getting a new shaft made for the other wheel, uh, finish getting these cleaned up. Uh, we got plenty to do. Uh, my main casting that we sent off to get sandblasted, I've actually got it back in shop. I'm going to do a video on that coming up uh, later on uh, and start doing the prep work for getting it painted. Uh, there's some interesting things on there I think you guys will enjoy seeing, so be on the lookout for that. That'll probably be the next video in the the rest of the series here. Um, but we are definitely making progress and moving forward on this big, massive 48 inch uh, bandsaw restoration. So, with that, guys, that is going to be a wrap. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Uh, hit that thumbs up button if you like what you saw. Really helps with the analytics at, at YouTube and helps getting my channel and my videos discovered by doing that. And uh, hit that bell icon if you want to get notifications uh, when I post new videos. And, guys, with that, that's going to be it. As always, again, thanks for watching.